Hello everyone. Well, any of you who've seen my previous video about the problem I had with my Vax dual power carpet washer, this is just a little update to show you that the matter, fingers crossed, has been resolved. Now this model in front of me here is the replacement, Vax kindly sent me, a brand new replacement for the faulty machine. Unfortunately, before this one arrived, they did send me the Reach model, which was the wrong model, so I contacted Vax and to their credit they speedily sent me the correct model which is the Total Home model. The Reach model is very similar but it doesn't have the pre-treatment kit that you get with the Total Home. The brush rolls are also purple colour on the Reach model. Apart from the pre-treatment kit they are the same machines. So the problem I had with the faulty machine, as some other people have reported, the drive belt has sort of moved along on the pulley at the back uh, melted the pulley and the machine seized up and there's been a smell of burning and sometimes smoke has come out of the machine. The smoke is caused by the burning rubber. It's nothing to do with the motor. The motor's fine on this. It was just the fact that the belt had shifted. So I've been assured that all new batches of this machine have the problem fixed. So I'll just point out a couple of things for you to check. If you've bought a Vax dual power carpet washer or one of the very similar Hoover dual powers. If you live in the USA, this model, very similar model to this, is available under the Hoover brand. So what Vax have done, I've already loosened the screws, and so now I'm going to show you how to change the belt as well on this video, in case you need to, because at some point the belt will stretch or snap and you will need to replace it. So I'm going to go through how to do that for you. So first thing to do to get access to the belt is remove both belt guards. I've already undone the screws to save some time, but you'll find there are eight screws that you need to undo, marked one to eight. So they've got a little number and an arrow. So you need to first undo this whole unit at the back. So these screw holes are numbered five, six, seven, and eight. So unscrew all the screws and then you can remove the whole back part here. Now before I show you the belt, I just want to point out a couple of things. This is the new modified part. Now if your machine, you can check this, if you turn it upside down and can you see there, look, there's a little green round sticker. Now I assume that symbolises the fact that this machine is okay. So if yours has got that sticker on, it'll be alright, but it might not have the sticker on and it might still be okay. The only other thing you need to look at, if you've taken this part off, make sure yours, oops, there goes the screw, make sure yours has got a metal spindle here. Can you just see that there? If yours doesn't have that, I'd suggest you contact Vax or Hoover, depending on which country you bought this, and ask them if they can send you one with this metal spindle because the faulty one I had didn't have this metal spindle. The reach model I was sent in error, I did check it and again it had the sticker and it had this extra metal spindle. Now obviously this very small part plays a minor or sorry a major role in keeping the belt in position so when it's actually in place this forms part of the when it's down there, it just stops the belt from moving on the pulley, which is what the problem was. The belt shifted too far on the pulley. Um, it started rubbing against the side of the pulley and it, it, it basically jarred and it's, it kept on going. The pulley didn't keep going and it melted and that's what caused the problem. So as long as yours has got this metal spindle in, you should be fine. So that, I was pleased to see that that there was a difference. If I'd opened up the other model that was claimed to be from a new batch and there was no difference, I would have been a bit dubious. But because of this, I feel more confident that this machine is not going to fail in the same way as the first one. So that's one thing to check. Anyway, back on to the replacing the brush roll. So first thing you do is remove the screws numbered 5 to 8 from that back part that also incorporates your wheel. Put that to one side and then you need to remove the other screws on the front part of the belt guard. They're numbered one to four. One little thing, you may need 
two types of screwdriver. It'll take a, a crosshead or Phillips screwdriver. But the thing I found on the screw position number seven here, the shaft of this particular screwdriver wouldn't go all the way down to unscrew the screw. So if you find that's the case, you might have to get yourself a screwdriver that's got a, a thinner shaft like that one so you'll be able to undo screw number seven. That's just a little thing I found. So remember, if you, if you can't get it unscrewed, it's because your shaft's too thick. And obviously, it's not normally a problem, but in this case, that is a problem. So that's the first part you need to remove. Put that to one side. And then, of course, you've got your second part. So now we can see all the inside with the belt. Now, either the machine isn't brushing properly because the belt's stretched, or it's snapped. If it's snapped, you'll just be able to remove it easily. But if it's just stretched, and you're noticing it's not brushing as well, you'll need to remove the belt off the two pulleys on the brush roll. So I'm just going to take the belt off the motor spindle at the back here. To remove the belts, you just pull them out. Pull them out from the side where the belt is situated. Just pull, pull it up and then out. Easy. Now at this stage, obviously if you've been using your carpet washer, you might find you want to give your your belts, uh, sorry, your brushes a good clean and also this cavity in here, give that a good wipe out and get any gunk because you will after a certain amount of use, especially if you've got pets, there might be hair and carpet fibres and all sorts of gunk, especially here as well where the brush rolls sit in. On one side there's two circular areas and on the other side it's a hexagonal piece. So just while you're doing it, it makes sense to spend a few minutes just clearing any gunk out of there before you fit your new belt. So in order to fit belts, that's the new belt. Obviously it's not the new belt but that uh, would be your new belt if you need to fit one. So the only thing you need to remember, there's only one way these will fit in because of course you've got a round section here and an oblong section here. So you, you'll not be able to get the oblong into a round hole and vice versa. And also you need to make sure you've got the pulley side where the belt goes round. Oops. Don't drop it. You need to make sure that's on the side where the motor spindle is. So first thing to do, after you've given it a good clean, locate the first brush roll, but slip your new belt over it first. Just keep it in position on the pulley there. And then you just need to push or locate the other side into the slot first, the round slot, and then just turn the end of the brush roll until, but don't do that. That's some, I'm just showing you this because that's not what to do. Don't trap the belt. So I did that on purpose, you see, to show you not to do that. Make sure you've got the belt tight on the pulley there, keep it in that position while you're locating the brush back into its position. So you might need to do a bit of jiggery pokery here to get it located. There we are. So now that's in place. The belt is free to move still and the brush roll moves easily. So then we get the second brush roll and repeat the process. Keep, keep the belt around your thumb and again make sure the belt's not going to get trapped when you push. So just turn the end until you find it's gone in and there we go. They're in and they're rotating freely and the belt is not trapped. It's in the channel where it should be. So then all you need to do is put the belt on the motor spindle just at the back here. You'll find it's easy to do. It's not a big, big effort to pull. I've had some vacuum cleaners. Um, obviously this isn't a vacuum cleaner, but it's a similar principle to an upright with a belt. Some have taken a lot of boot strength to stretch them back enough to get them over the spindle. But you'll find this one will just sit over the spindle easy enough because the belt will tension when you've got the rear belt guard in place and then the brushes will rotate. 
So before you screw anything back, again double check that everything's rotating freely, double check the belt isn't caught and check that you have got the belt on the spindle. It's so easy for it to become dislodged, just make sure it's centrally located. One important thing you need to remember when you place the screw both belt guards back you must put the rear belt guard on first, the one with the wheel. If you screw this one in first you'll find you can't get that one in and you'll know that from error. Now I've done that. The instructions to do this are in the booklet you get but some people I know like to see a visual demonstration so I thought this might help some folk out. So let's go and see. It is it is tricky to locate this. This is the trickiest part of the whole thing. You don't want to get it in the wrong position. Before you start screwing any screws down, you want to make sure that it is properly located. Let me just, I'll remove the screws. Now one thing I'll just point out to you as well, there are two different sizes of screw here. You've got three screws and then a slightly shorter one. Now the shorter one goes in position number, is it six? Position six. So if the screws come out and you're thinking, oh I've got one that's shorter, that goes in position six because it's got a shorter distance. If you put a longer screw into position six, the screw, the actual end of the screw will poke out through the um, top and it could stop the machine from going into the upright and horizontal position because it's gonna stick into the motor cover. So it's very important, and this doesn't say it in the instruction book, it's very important that the shorter screw goes into position number six there. So we've taken all the screws out, it's a bit easier now. Again double check the belts in place and we need to, right that's in, it's, it's not going to stay in position because it's under some tension. So I'm just going to put the shorter screw in first, that's it, just to hold everything in place. Again, don't start screwing anything in if you're having any trouble because it might not be lined up right. If you don't get it in properly, then you could find you're cracking the plastic and then it won't screw in at all. So I'm not properly screwing them in, I'm just doing them part of the way, just for speed. But obviously you'll need to screw them in, right, I need to get the thinner screwdriver shaft for number seven. Make sure you screw it in until you feel resistance, don't over tighten. So that's the, the back belt guard in place. Then you need to put the front belt guard in. Again locate it with a static brush to the front. That's it. So it's before again before you screw anything down make sure it's in position correctly which it is and for speed I'm not going to go all the way with this but you get the idea you need to screw all four screws up together and then as a final check when you've got the machine lying down like this you'll find you can retake the brushes but they're quite hard to move and that's because the brushes are now being driven by the motor spindle. The belt has been tightened by the action of screwing the belt guard, this rear belt guard into place. So it is engaged now with the motor spindle so that means when you're using the machine they'll rotate. When it's in the upright position, when you're using the cleaning tools for example, you'll find that the brushes are easy to move because now the belt is not tight on the motor spindle. So it means basically you can use this machine with the hose and the belt will not drive the brushes, which is a good little safety feature. So that's how to change a belt. 
on a Vax Dual Power carpet washer. Now, hopefully, because I've got a brand new machine with the correct part, I'll be able to do a full demo of this model. So stay tuned, very shortly I'll be demoing this, cleaning carpets, upholstery, and we'll see if that extra long hose does reach right to the top of the stairs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.